history. Is the Bible the full and only truth that we should live by? Well, as I've said many times in my seminars, that God is an infinite being as far as I'm aware, and that God's love is infinite. And I also believe as a result of that, that God's truth is infinite. Now, an infinite truth cannot ever be contained in a finite book. So a book uh, like the Bible, you know, is, is around about, generally around about a thousand pages or so. And it's, there is no way that such a book can contain all of the truth of God. So, and, and in fact, the Bible itself even states that because it actually suggests in the book of Revelation that there will be further revelations of truth at some point in the future. Mm. And so the Bible itself suggests that it is not the complete revelation of God. And so any person who just assumes that it's the complete revelation of God is, is already having an invalid assumption that is not based on any logic, but rather based on what they hope, mm. which is very, very different than actually having any accuracy in terms of truth or any proof or evidence. In terms of whether the Bible should be the thing we live by, well, if the Bible contained only loving and truthful things, then I would say, yes, you could live by it completely if you wanted to live by a limited book. Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind that it is limited because it's not infinite and therefore it is limited and therefore cannot contain everything that you might want to live by in the future. However, the Bible does not contain just things about love and truth. The Bible also contains many errors, many lies, many misrepresentations of God, many blasphemous things about God, things about God that are obviously completely inaccurate and untruthful. Many things that are about my life in the first century that are completely inaccurate and untruthful. And so therefore it cannot be trusted to be lived by. Mm -hmm. There are many things in the Bible that you could live by and do well. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, you know, if you looked at the Bible's viewpoint of ethics, for example, particularly what I presented in the first century about the golden rule that I, that I mentioned many times, if you lived by that in your life, you would do very well. You know, you, nobody would, you'd, never, nobody would, you'd never want somebody to murder you, so you wouldn't murder anybody. You'd never want somebody to go to war with you, so you wouldn't go to war with anybody. You'd never want somebody to rape you, so you wouldn't rape anybody. You'd never want somebody to steal from you, so you wouldn't steal from anybody, and so forth. So if you followed that one principle, which is one verse in the yes. Bible, um, then you would do very, very well, and you'd pass over into the spirit world in a very good condition if you followed it completely. Mm -hmm. The majority of people, even who profess to believe in the Bible, don't do that, though. Yes. The majority of people have no idea how to act ethically with one another, and so therefore break that one principle quite frequently. It's the one principle I said fulfilled all the law and the prophets, and it's the one principle most people have huge amounts of difficulty following. So I, my personal feelings about following the Bible is you need to be able to have discernment about what the Bible actually is saying to you and whether it is loving, a loving concept that it's presenting to you. Now, if it is a loving concept that it's presenting to you, uh, we have to then question whether our concept of love is, uh, is accurate or not. So if we feel that it's a loving concept, then it requires a lot of logical analysis to determine whether it is actually a loving concept. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you look at the Bible's concept of sacrifice, and particularly my sacrifice, you know, the Bible concept is that I sacrificed my life for the sin of the world. Now, for some people, they might, that might appeal to them. It might appeal to them for a lot of reasons. Having somebody come along and wipe out all of their own sins without them having to do anything sounds like a fairly appealing thing at times, right? However, if they analysed it from a point of view, if they had to t deal with the sins of every other person who is on the planet, it wouldn't feel very fair. Mm. So it, it has a deep feeling of injustice associated with it if you're the person on the receiving end of having to do the sacrifice for the others. Now, if they felt about that, they would realise that it's not a very loving concept. And so therefore, it's a concept that can be dismissed and not practised. Mm -hmm. And, and most Christians would be up in arms about me saying that, but that's the reality. The reality is my sacrifice never happened. I never 
sacrificed my life for their sake um, in, a, in the manner in which they believe it to be and, and the sacrifice did not accomplish the forgiveness of their sins. Mm -hmm. The sacrifice in fact did not accomplish anything for them aside from proving that I was alive after I died. Mm -hmm. It did not accomplish much else. It also harmed many of my friends in the first century and myself. It harmed you in the first century, my unborn child, and many other things were harmed as a result of the so-called sacrifice, mm. which is an indication that it's an unloving concept. So, so if somebody analysed it from the perspective of love, they'd then know what to practise that is present in the Bible and what not to, what to stay away from. My suggestion is that people do that, mm. that they learn the difference uh, and have the discernment to work out the difference between what is loving and what is not. And once they learn what is loving, practice it. Mm. Because it's love that dictates the rest of your future. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, to clarify again, the, the, do you believe the Bible is the full and only truth that you should live by? No. So where does this concept come from that it is the full and only truth that we should live by? Well, the Bible itself states that it is inspired of God and the only inspired word of God. And uh, pe men wrote this in order to have people believe what they said and not accept anything else. It's a way of controlling people to actually make this statement. And because the Bible states this, many people believe it. And as a result of them believing it, they then assume that everything that's contained within it is the inspired word of God. And they feel that anybody who doesn't follow it can be condemned. And they also believe that anybody that doesn't follow it will be condemned by God. And that's not the case at all. I've seen many people pass in the spirit world in my life. And, uh, and you'd be surprised how many people who have never seen the Bible ever and were definitely not condemned by God because they had love in their soul. They, they practiced love. Love is what I stated in the first century was the crux of all life. And if you learn to practice love rather than just believe in a book, you'll do far better than believing in a book that also mentions a lot of unloving things. Mm. Mm. Thank you.